Hello, thank you so much for the introduction. My name is Marianne and the surname Stjärnvall. Can we all try it one time? Stjärnvall. Perfect. You don't know how many times that I've been traveling and I get to like the hotel or something and I can't say Stjärnvall to them. I have to say like Stjärnvall. And they're like, oh, you are Sankt Stjärnvall? I'm like, yeah, okay, sure. Whatever. Well, I'm going to talk to you today about the simple CRO process in a complex organization. And thank you, Uni, for this great talk, because now that we know how to do A-B testing, we need to have a process about it, right? Because this is how we can build that kind of experimental organization that we all want to have. But all of our organizations are pretty complex. And why is that? Because your organization is built out of people, and people are complex. For example, take a look at this very blurry picture. And it's only blurry because this was the only way I was able to show you guys, because this is actually the system map of TUI. So this is all our systems and how they are connected to each other. We call it the Milky Way. <laughs> but in this system map, we have a lot of people. They're all in here somewhere. We have the sales team. We have the UX and design team. We have CRM. We have trading, of course, in the travel industry. We have economy. We have product owners. Now you're starting to see the complexity of this, right? There's a lot of people in your organization. We have IT and development, of course. They are always in my heart. <laughs> the content, the marketing, the HR. So where do we play CRO? It's not really that simple, right? Because CRO has to do with a lot of these different areas. And every day we are in touch with people from all around of this organization. So where should we put this team? Well, team, well, sometimes it's just a single person. Hands up, how many of you are working in-house with CRO at the moment? Some people. Jaku, yes, thank you. My Finnish colleague. <laughs> Perfect. So how ma many of you are outsourcing CRO for, like, to a consultant? Hands up. No one? Oh, yes, some, some. Okay, some small hands, yes. That's perfect. We love consultants. Actually, I, I can't tell you exactly where to put this uh, CRO team, uh, but I can tell you how we do it at TUI. And in TUI, we have our CRO in two different teams. I'm handling the Nordic A-B testing and personalization from our UX and digital team from our headquarters in uh, Stockholm. But then we have four CRO specialists in-house, each in the local source market. So we have one in Finland, one in Sweden, one in Norway, and one in Denmark, okay? But where you are going to put your team, that's like decided on how your business is built. So there's not one solution works for everyone. And when you first start off with working with CRO, you probably hire like a consultant that helps you out with the CRO work, maybe one day a week, or perhaps like uh, some hours of the week, or perhaps they're not even in your office at all. They're sitting at their site, just sending you lots of emails all the time, telling you what to do. But when you start to work with CRO in-house, you really need to have a plan as to where to put this process. So today I'm going to show you how this process can look through two different perspectives. First of all, we have the consultant. That's the one point of view I will be taking with you guys. And on the other hand, we have the in-house CRO. So how does this process actually differ from like different point of views and how you used to work with CRO? So let's check the CRO process. This is the one that you learn by the book when starting to work with CRO. You want to do this as closely as possible and follow this iterative round, around, around. And like the question is here, how do we do it? Because we all do it in different ways. It differs if you're a consultant. It differs if it works in-house. So I'm trying to figure that out for you guys and to see the difference of it. So let's get going with the first phase, the analysis. Okay, so the consultant walk into your office. It sounds like a joke, I know. Uh, <laughs> but they, at first, they do this, this uh, conversion audit. 
And they do that by taking the quantitative data that you have, like from Google Analytics or for Adobe Analytics, and they find out the what. And then they take your qualitative data, as from Hotjar or whatever tools you're using, to find the why. Together, and with some web psychology, you find insights about your site, which you then will build your hypothesis on. And this is the way you should do it each and every time. Well, if we move over and see what it actually looks when we do this in-house, in that complex organization surrounded by people, it looks a little bit differently. Because now you don't only have these data sources to take care of, but you're in meetings all the time, meeting with people who think about your site, who acts on your users, who interacts with them, and telling you all of these thoughts that they have. You're getting reports about numbers each and every day. You have dashboards that show you other numbers, and then you're doing some tests which you already gained results from. So it, it's so much more than just looking at a couple of different data sources that you need to take into consideration, because these ideas can come from absolutely anywhere. OK? So you can do this, and the truth is that even though you want to do this perfect conversion audit for each and every test you do, that is not reality. You won't have time to do that. You will be lucky if you have time to do like two per year, maybe. And maybe you won't even have time to do that. But this data that you have from so many different sources and people is worth so much more also. OK, so let's get on to the next step, because now we have our analysis. Now it's time to build a hypothesis. And the consultant comes in and says, base your hypothesis on data all the time, because we want to be that data-driven company. And we'll all say, yes, we want to do that, absolutely. But I also say, come on, loosen up a little bit. Uh, we don't have to be that strict all the time, because we're actually working with people. So it can be like this when you're in-house. And it will be that people will come to you and say, I have an idea. And now it's time that, and it's up to you as a CRO specialist to like gather all those ideas because you want people to open up and to tell you about their ideas because they can find out a great idea when they're in the shower or doing whatever. Uh, it might not even be anyone in the office that you are getting ideas from. But now your job as a CRO specialist is to prioritize these ideas. And even more important, it's up to you to find out if the idea is actually valid. And what do I mean by that? Well, I mean that when you come with an idea to me, you actually have an assumption about the user, whether you think about it or not. So it's up to me to actually go into the data and check if the idea and your assumptions are true and applicable to our visitors. So when I've done that, then we can start prioritizing and continue with an idea. And this actually happened to me, and this is the case I'm going to show you. Our head of UX came to me and said, Marianne, I've, I've got an idea. I said, OK, tell me about it. He said, in our top navigation, we have this link that says Boka. And I'll translate it for you guys. It's book. <laughs> so he says, I want to change this to the a bit softer search trip. And now, here comes the imp most important part, you have to remember this, you ask, why? Because otherwise, you will never know. So I asked him, OK, why? And he said, um, if you click on this link that says book, the expectations of it is that you will land on a page where you're going to book your trip. And I said, yes, of course. And he said, no. When you click on this, you come to a page where you search for your trip. OK, so we checked some data of it. And of course, I mean, expectations are everything. And that's what building a, a great business also. So I said, OK, let's do it. So now it's time for development. We have our hypothesis. And our hypothesis in this case was if we change the copy of the link from book to the bit more softer search trip, more people will click on that link and actually convert in the end. That was the hypothesis. So straight into development. And we just love that. We just kick it on and start building. But then I come and say, no, no, we're not going to do that. Because first, before you do that, and this is where the complexity of your organization kicks in, 
Now you have to go and write your test plan for the test, as I'm sure all of you are doing before you start the test. You write your test plan exactly like should. But this is really important, actually, so you should. So write down that test plan. And right now, I want you to think about like, who are the people like, that are involved in this test, that somehow have a feeling about this part of the site. Because when you work with CRO, in the beginning when you start, you're not really a liked person at all. Because what you're doing is that you're changing a design that your designers have drawn. You're changing the content that your content manager has decided on, and you're changing the code that your developers have written. And they won't love you for that, of course, obviously. So in this test, I thought, OK, I go through this list. I have to check with UX and design. And lucky me, it was the head of UX that came to me with the idea. Check on that. Perfect. The product owners. OK, for this part on my page, I had two product owners. So I needed to get an OK from both of them. Then we have the developers. And what we have to do here is to go to them and check, OK, I want to do this test. You explain about the test. And then you ask, is there something that's going to be released soon that might like interrupt the tests or make like the time frame change? And most important, well, because I know that this is only a copy change. It should be quite simple. But I don't really know what they have written in the code. So I have to check, is there like some functionality? Is there an event that's being triggered when you click on this, which I might destroy with a third-party script? If you are that humble for the developers with your work, they will respect you so much more. And you can do so great things together. So when you get in all of these OKs and stuff like that, that's perfect. Now you can build your test. OK, building is done. Next step, we're about to go live. And we love to press that Start button, because you got to get that feeling like, oh, this is when it's happening. I'm going to raise that goal so high. It's going to be good. And then I come and say, no, not yet. Because you're not really done yet. Because you're forgetting some very, very important things. Remember, now you have written the code for your test. That means that you have changed the actual code on the site. So now you need to go back to those developer and say, OK, now I'll change it. Here's my test. Because you have checked the test, but you have just like checked it. It's OK, it's OK, like in all frames and stuff like that. But what you need to do is to go to the developers and ask them, try to break my test. Because if they can't break your code, then it's good code. And they will also know that you have done everything to make this variation as good as possible before you put it live. And if something would break anyway, because it does with A-B tests sometimes, we know that, and that's OK. But if it uh, does break, tell them, like, go directly to me, and we'll fix it. They will like you for that. So get that OK. Now, before we go live, one last thing. Go back to that test plan, because you also need to do your quality assurance, right? You have to check that your KPIs are in place, because that's so important when we build A-B testing. We think that we know what we want to measure with a test, but in fact, not all the time we do. So, OK, I had that hypothesis that more people will not click in the top navigation. And I mean, with Frostmo, it's really easy to measure the transactions in the end, because it's just a tick in the Google Analytics box, and I can see the data along with all of my other qual quantitative data that I want to see. But it turned out that we actually don't measure the click on that link. And it's not always that easy if you want more clicks to just add them. But what you do there is that on that DOM element, you just add a single JavaScript line that says, like, OK, when someone clicks on this, send it into my data layer. Let Google Tag Manager pick it up and send it into Google Analytics. Then you have all your data combined, even the clicks. And you can put as many of them as possible. And it's amazing. Do that. Because then you can actually measure something. Because if you don't do it and run your test and come back and realize, whoops, we didn't measure, you're trying to find some insights, but you'll be lying to everyone. So you really need to go through this. And if you're unsure, also ask your product owners about, OK, what would you want to see? Is there anything special that I can measure that you want to take into account? OK? Perfect. Now that we've done that, then we need to do one more thing. You need to tell all these people that your tests are going live. And how do we do that at TUI? Well, this is one slide of a template that we do every time we do an A-B test. So we specify very clearly the hypothesis 
that I told you, by changing the copy from the hard book to the softer search trip, more people will click on the top navigation and purchase their trips in the end. It will be live for about 14 days and will measure, measure transactions after this click KPI. We send that out to the whole organization and they will know what everything is about. And also important, put in pictures of your original and your variation because, I mean, that's the good thing about A-B testing, that it's so easy to show, right? In my case, I also have to send this out to all of the CRO specialists in the different countries because they need to translate their copy into their own language, and then we duplicate those tests. Okay, we send that out. Now it's done, perfect, it's time for analyzing, and this is actually the one part where I feel like every CRO worker in the world feels exactly the same. And that is that you gain when you succeed and you learn when you fail. And that's what we really love about doing this kind of A-B testing, right? That if we do a positive test, that results in a lot of money. That's really good for everyone. We like that. We like bringing mo more money into the company. But if we do a test that actually fails, then we have the ability to dig into the data and find the insights as to what did we change that actually changed the way our visitors behave on our site and why because we actually triggered a change in behavior, and that's cool. So work on that and build on your new hypothesis with that information. Okay, moving on. Uh, back to this slide. The next slide in this template that we're always doing are, of course, the results, because you need to send out the results in your company. Everyone needs to understand them. So we do it in the exact same way all the time, and that looks like this. The, n the, uh, the numbers are not real. Uh, just so you know, so there's need to think about that anymore. Uh, but this is a template, and it needs to be the exact same for everyone who is going to like write down the results. So what we did, or what I did, take, it takes some work, but when you've done it, it's totally worth it, because you're saving a lot of time when you're actually analyzing, because you know the calculations need to be exactly done the same way. Otherwise, our results will differ from test to test. So, we all have this template at UI, and when we double-click on one of those tables, an Excel sheet pops open. Here you just write down all of your sessions and all of your transactions, and the calculations are made automatically. Perfect, right? And how does this work? Well, there's a second sheet hidden in the background that no one needs to touch at all that does all of these calculations. It calculates the conversion rate, the improvement versus control, and it calculates the statistical significance, or the confidence interval. So then you just close that window, and you will have all the numbers in your PowerPoint like that. Perfect. And uh, of course, the next slide is just a big slide of your winning variation, and you will have recommendations of implementations, of course. And now it's time for the next step, the last step, that is actually implementation. So here, you, if you have done exactly what I have told you, talk to all of these people. I mean, talking to people is like 60% of my work. Like building that one line test, it doesn't take any time at all. The thing is just to get everybody involved and on board for this test, so they actually want to see the result. So if you have not done that, and you just like send an email saying, this is the result, here's the implementation specifications, nothing will happen because the product owner will take that, and they will put it in the bottom of uh, the pile for the developers, and it will be done in about five months or something. If you have done all of this, then you know these people. So you can actually go and say, hi, well, you remember this test that we have like been following for two weeks? It's done. You want to see the results? And you show them results, and your job as a CRO is to answer all the questions. Because it can be kind of hard to understand if you're not familiar with the data as to how we have gained these insights. So we need to explain and educate. That's a big part of your role. So after you have done that, and you have done everything in this process, when I went to my product owner and told her about these results, do you know how long time it took before it was implemented on the site? Five minutes. Because we were sitting next to the development team, and she said, oh, this is the result, it's really good. And I came there, and I answered some questions, and boom, done. So even though it might sound a bit harsh, and I mean, we really 
<laughs> do love to work uh, CRO all together. Uh, we have to remember like that that's the thing that combines us. Everyone who's working with CRO, it's the love for CRO. Thank you. <laughs>